There's no possible way that you watched every single one of these videos because when I was creating this video, I'm looking back at my whole course and I'm just like, holy crap, that is a lot of information and a lot of practice in solving quadratics that somebody could possibly go through if they wanted to, to learn how to solve quadratics um, by factoring. And so congratulations to you for at least maybe coming down or working your way down to this video or just even scrolling down and coming down to kind of see the summary video. And I'll try to make the summary video as quick as possible. Really all I wanted to do is just kind of understand exactly what we're trying to achieve by solving quadratics. Um, I've kind of already gone through a lot of the tips and tricks um, and common mistakes that I see with students, but I'll, I'll have a couple, of, a couple of them that I want to add in. So the main important thing is we have a quadratic that's going to come up into our standard form. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we've seen a whole bunch of, or whole, I wanted to use the word slew of quadratics where, you know, maybe we're missing a bx or maybe we're missing a c. We can't miss the x squared because that's part of the identity of the quadratic. But we've talked about a whole different types of ways how to solve that. Now, again, when we're looking at the quadratic, the main important thing that you, we want to understand is a quadratic comes in three different systems. We can have a quadratic that's going to touch the graph and rebound, meaning it's going to have one solution. We can have a quadratic that's going to intersect at two points, which is two solutions. And this comes in the most important when students were taking the square root and you have to make sure you include the positive and the negative. That's the most important part for that. And that came up in the square root method and completing the square. And then there's also ones that come up this where they're not going to intersect at all. And that was very important. We came up a lot with those in the square root method, completing the square, and as well as the quadratic formula. So I, understanding that when you're solving a quadratic, you can have one, two, or zero solutions to it that it, it makes you kind of think that you've got to be able to identify, and that's a lot what we talked about in the quadratic formula, using the discriminant. How how is the discriminant going to affect my solution? So even when you get into graphing or completing the square, we can always go back to that discriminant, evaluate the discriminant to kind of see, all right, am I going to have one, two, or no solutions? And then obviously then you can know that your algebra, you know, is it, are you on the right track or not? A couple of the common mistakes that I, I still see with a lot of students is when they're solving a quadratic, they want to solve it like a linear equation meaning they want to isolate the x squared. And that's not the case that we're about. When we're doing this, the main important thing, the main idea that I want you to wrap around, especially with factoring, not so much with the completing the square and the square root method, but when we're getting around factoring is the idea of the zero product property. That a times b equals zero, then a equals zero, or b equals zero, all right? So what we want to do is we want to take our quadratic and rewrite it as a product so it's set equal to zero. So what I do is I change my y, my f of x, whatever my function notate, whatever my notation would be, and therefore I'm going to now use this to, re to factor this so it's a product equal to 0, then I can apply my 0 product property. And then what's obviously important about the quadratic formula and, not the quadratic formula, but completing the square and the square root method is in those cases, we're going to be applying the square root method. And so therefore, we're going to have to, whenever we're solving, we have to make sure we include the positive and negative. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see with those two methods, is students take the square root of a number and they forget to include the positive and the negative value. Um, but one of the tips and tricks, you know, guys, I'd really say is you got to make sure you understand, especially if you're factoring, to set it equal to zero, to create it as a product, to apply the zero product property. And the common mistakes, uh, again, would be is trying to solve it like a linear function when you have to factor it, and not including the positive and the negatives when you take a square root. But uh, you know, there's a lot of little ones that I've taken into uh, similar courses. But ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to make this nice, you know, quick little video for you, just to summarize, congratulate you on coming all the way to this end, and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.